Pipeline Transport, Wikipedia Article Audio Pipeline transport is the transportation of goods or material through a pipe. The latest data from 2014 gives a total of slightly less than 2,175,000 miles of pipeline in 120 countries of the world. The United States had 65%, Russia had 8%, and Canada had 3%. Thus 75% of all pipeline were in these three countries. Oil and Natural Gas Pipeline and Gas Journal S Worldwide Survey figures indicate that 118,623 miles of pipelines are planned and under construction. Of these, 88,976 miles represent projects in the planning and design phase. 29,647 miles reflect pipelines in various stages of construction. Liquids and gases are transported in pipelines and any chemically stable substance can be sent through a pipeline. Pipelines exist for the transport of crude and refined petroleum, fuels such as oil, natural gas and biofuels and other fluids including sewage, slurry, water, and beer. Pipelines are useful for transporting water for drinking or irrigation over long distances when it needs to move over hills, or where canals or channels are poor choices due to considerations of evaporation, pollution, or environmental impact. Pneumatic tubes using compressed air can be used to transport solid capsules. Oil pipelines are made from steel or plastic tubes which are usually buried. The oil is moved through the pipelines by pump stations along the pipeline. Natural gas are lightly press sunrised into liquids known as natural gas liquids. Natural gas pipelines are constructed of carbon steel. Hydrogen pipeline transport is the transportation of hydrogen through a pipe. District heating or teleheating systems use a network of insulated pipes which transport heated water, pressurized hot water or sometimes steam to the customer. Growth of market Pipelines conveying flammable or explosive material, such as natural gas or oil, pose special safety concerns and there have been various accidents. Pipelines can be the target of vandalism, sabotage, or even terrorist attacks. In war, pipelines are often the target of military attacks. Construction and Operation It is uncertain when the first crude oil pipeline was built. Credit for the development of pipeline transport is disputed with competing claims for Vladimir Shukov and the Brenobel Company in the late 19th century, and the Oil Transport Association, which first constructed a two-inch wrought iron pipeline over a six-mile track from an oil field in Pennsylvania to a railroad station in Oil Creek, in the 1860s. Pipelines are generally the most economical way to transport large quantities of oil refined oil products or natural gas over land. Ammonia Natural gas are lightly pressurized into liquids known as natural gas liquids. Small NGL processing facilities can be located in oil fields so the butane and propane liquid under light pressure of 125 pounds per square inch, can be shipped by rail, truck, or pipeline. Propane can be used as a fuel in oil fields to heat various facilities used by the oil drillers or equipment and trucks used in the oil patch. E.g., propane will convert from a gas to a liquid under light pressure, 100 psi, give or take depending on temperature, and is pumped into cars and trucks at less than 125 psi at retail stations. Pipelines and rail cars use about double that pressure to pump at 250 psi. Alcohol fuels 
the distance to ship propane to markets is much shorter, as thousands of natural gas processing plants are located in or near oil fields. Many Bakken Basin oil companies in North Dakota, Montana, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan gas fields separate the NGLs in the field, allowing the drillers to sell propane directly to small wholesalers, eliminating the large refinery control of product and prices for propane or butane. Coal and Ore The most recent major pipeline to start operating in North America is a TransCanada natural gas line going north across the Niagara region bridges with Marcellus shale gas from Pennsylvania and others tied in methane or natural gas sources, into the Canadian province of Ontario as of the fall of 2012, supplying 16% of all the natural gas used in Ontario. This new U.S. supplied natural gas displaces the natural gas formerly shipped to Ontario from Western Canada in Alberta and Manitoba, thus dropping the government-regulated pipeline shipping charges because of the significantly shorter distance from gas source to consumer. Compared to shipping by railroad, pipelines have lower cost per unit and higher capacity. Pipelines are preferable to transportation by truck for a number of reasons. Employment on completed pipelines represents only 1% of that of the trucking industry. Hydrogen Water Other systems District heating To avoid delays and U.S. government regulation, many small, Medium and large oil producers in North Dakota have decided to run an oil pipeline north to Canada to meet up with a Canadian oil pipeline shipping oil from west to east. This allows the Bakken Basin and Three Forks oil producers to get higher negotiated prices for their oil because they will not be restricted to just one wholesale market in the U.S. The distance from the biggest oil patch in North Dakota, in Williston, North Dakota, is only about 85 miles or 137 kilometers to the Canada-US border and Manitoba. Mutual funds and joint ventures are big investors in new oil and gas pipelines. In the fall of 2012, the US began exporting propane to Europe, known as LPG, as wholesale prices there are much higher than in North America. Additionally, a pipeline is currently being constructed from North Dakota to Illinois, commonly known as the Dakota Access Pipeline. As more North American pipelines are built, even more exports of LNG, propane, butane, and other natural gas products occur on all three U.S. coasts. To give insight, North Dakota Bakken region's oil production has grown by 600% from 2007 to 2015. North Dakota oil companies are shipping huge amounts of oil by tanker rail car as they can direct the oil to the market that gives the best price, and rail cars can be used to avoid a congested oil pipeline to get the oil to a different pipeline in order to get the oil to market faster or to a different less busy oil refinery. However, pipelines provide a cheaper means to transport by volume. Inbridge in Canada is applying to reverse an oil pipeline going from east to west and expanding it and using it to ship western Canadian bitumen oil eastward. From a presently rated 250,000 barrels equivalent per day pipeline, it will be expanded to between 1 million to 1.3 million barrels per day. It will bring western oil to refineries in Ontario, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Quebec, and New York by early 2014. New Brunswick will also refine some of this Western Canadian crude and export some crude and refined oil to Europe from its deep water oil ULCC loading port. Although pipelines can be built under the sea, that process is economically and technically demanding, 
so the majority of oil at sea is transported by tanker ships. Similarly, it is often more economically feasible to transport natural gas in the form of LNG, however the break-even point between LNG and pipelines would depend on the volume of natural gas and the distance it travels. The Enbridge Sandpiper Pipeline is proposed to transfer valuable oil from western North Dakota through northwestern Minnesota. The pipeline will be 24 to 30 inches in diameter. It will carry over 300,000 barrels of oil a day with a volatility of 32. The market size for oil and gas pipeline construction experienced tremendous growth prior to the economic downturn in 2008. After faltering in 2009, Demand for pipeline expansion and updating increased the following year as energy production grew. By 2012, almost 32,000 miles of North American pipeline were being planned or under construction. When pipelines are constrained, additional pipeline product transportation options may include the use of drag-reducing agents, or by transporting product via truck or rail. Oil pipelines are made from steel or plastic tubes with inner diameter typically from 4 to 48 inches. Most pipelines are typically buried at a depth of about 3 to 6 feet. To protect pipes from impact, abrasion, and corrosion, a variety of methods are used. These can include wood lagging, concrete coating, rock shield, high-density polyethylene, imported sand padding, and padding machines. Crude oil contains varying amounts of paraffin wax and in colder climates wax buildup may occur within a pipeline. Often these pipelines are inspected and cleaned using pigging, the practice of using devices known as pigs to perform various maintenance operations on a pipeline. The devices are also known as scrapers or go-devils. Smart pigs are used to detect anomalies in the pipe such as dents, metal loss caused by corrosion, cracking or other mechanical damage. These devices are launched from pig launcher stations and travel through the pipeline to be received at any other station downstream, either cleaning wax deposits and material that may have accumulated inside the line or inspecting and recording the condition of the line. For natural gas, pipelines are constructed of carbon steel and vary in size from 2 to 60 inches in diameter, depending on the type of pipeline. The gas is pressurized by compressor stations and is odorless unless mixed with a mercaptan odorant where required by a regulating authority. RAM 1130 Computational Pipeline Monitoring for Liquids Pipelines API 1149 Pipeline Variable Uncertainties and Their Effects on Leak Detectability Highly toxic ammonia is theoretically the most dangerous substance to be transported through long-distance pipelines. However, incidents on ammonia transporting lines are uncommon unlike on industrial ammonia processing equipment. A major ammonia pipeline is the Ukrainian Transamiak line connecting the Tolyadi Azot facility in Russia to the exporting Black Sea port of Odessa. Pipelines have been used for transportation of ethanol in Brazil, and there are several ethanol pipeline projects in Brazil and the United States. The main problems related to the transport of ethanol by pipeline are its corrosive nature and tendency to absorb water and impurities in pipelines, which are not problems with oil and natural gas. Insufficient volumes and cost effectiveness are other considerations limiting construction of ethanol pipelines. Slurry pipelines are sometimes used to transport coal or ore from mines. The material to be transported is closely mixed with water before being introduced to the pipeline, at the far end, the material must be dried. 
One example is a 525 km slurry pipeline which is planned to transport iron ore from the Minas Rio mine to the port of ACU in Brazil. An existing example is the 85 km Savage River slurry pipeline in Tasmania, Australia, possibly the world's first when it was built in 1967. It includes a 366-meter bridge span at 167 meters above the Savage River. Hydrogen pipeline transport is a transportation of hydrogen through a pipe as part of the hydrogen infrastructure. Hydrogen pipeline transport is used to connect the point of hydrogen production or delivery of hydrogen with the point of demand, with transport costs similar to CNG. The technology is proven. Most hydrogen is produced at the place of demand with every 50 to 100 miles an industrial production facility. The 1938 Rhein Ruhr 240 km hydrogen pipeline is still in operation. As of 2004, there are 900 miles of low pressure hydrogen pipelines in the US and 930 miles in Europe. Two millennia ago, the ancient Romans made use of large aqueducts to transport water from higher elevations by building the aqueducts in graduated segments that allowed gravity to push the water along until it reached its destination. Hundreds of these were built throughout Europe and elsewhere, and along with flour mills were considered the lifeline of the Roman Empire. The ancient Chinese also made use of channels and pipe systems for public works. The famous Han Dynasty court eunuch Zhang Rang once ordered the engineer Bai Lan to construct a series of square pallet chain pumps outside the capital city of Luoyang. These chain pumps serviced the imperial palaces and living quarters of the capital city as the water lifted by the chain pumps was brought in by a stoneware pipe system. Pipelines are useful for transporting water for drinking or irrigation over long distances when it needs to move over hills, or where canals or channels are poor choices due to considerations of evaporation, pollution, or environmental impact. The 530 km Goldfields Water Supply Scheme in Western Australia using 750 mm pipe and completed in 1903 was the largest water supply scheme of its time. Examples of significant water pipelines in South Australia are the Morgan Yala Pipeline and Manium Adelaide Pipelines, both part of the larger Snowy Mountains Scheme. There are two Los Angeles, California aqueducts, the Owens Valley Aqueduct and the second Los Angeles Aqueduct which also include extensive use of pipelines. The Great Man-Made River of Libya supplies 3,680,000 cubic meters of water each day to Tripoli, Benghazi, Sirte, and several other cities in Libya. The pipeline is over 2,800 kilometers long, and is connected to wells tapping an aquifer over 500 meters underground. District heating or teleheating systems consist of a network of insulated feed and return pipes which transport heated water, pressurized hot water or sometimes steam to the customer. While steam is hottest and may be used in industrial processes due to its higher temperature, it is less efficient to produce and transport due to greater heat losses. Heat transfer oils are generally not used for economic and ecological reasons. The typical annual loss of thermal energy through distribution is around 10%, as seen in Norway's district heating network. District heating pipelines are normally installed underground, with some exceptions. Within the system, heat storage may be installed to even out peak load demands. Heat is transferred into the central heating of the dwellings through heat exchangers at heat substations, without mixing of the fluids in either system. Bars in the Veltins Arena, a major football ground in Gelsenkirchen, Germany, 
are interconnected by a 5 km long beer pipeline. In Rahner's city in Denmark, the so-called Thor beer pipeline was operated. Originally, copper pipes ran directly from the brewery, but when the brewery moved out of the city in the 1990s, Thor beer replaced it with a giant tank. A 3 km beer pipeline was completed in Bruges, Belgium in September 2016 to reduce truck traffic on the city streets. Beer The village of Hallstatt in Austria, which is known for its long history of salt mining, claims to contain the oldest industrial pipeline in the world, dating back to 1595. It was constructed from 13,000 hollowed-out tree trunks to transport brine 40 kilometers from Hallstatt to Ebensee. Between 1978 and 1994, a 15 km milk pipeline ran between the Dutch island of Ameland and Holward on the mainland, of which 8 km beneath the Wadden Sea. Every day, 30.000 litres of milk produced on the island were transported to be processed on the mainland. In 1994, the milk transport was abandoned. In places, a pipeline may have to cross water expanses, such as small seas, straits, and rivers. In many instances, they lie entirely on the seabed. These pipelines are referred to as marine pipelines. They are used primarily to carry oil or gas, but transportation of water is also important. In offshore projects, a distinction is made between a flowline and a pipeline. The former is an INTR field pipeline, in the sense that it is used to connect subsea wellheads manifolds and the platform within a particular development field. The latter, sometimes referred to as an export pipeline, is used to bring the resource to shore. The construction and maintenance of marine pipelines imply logistical challenges that are different from those on land, mainly because of wave and current dynamics, along with other geohazards. In general, Pipelines can be classified in three categories depending on purpose. When a pipeline is built, the construction project not only covers the civil engineering work to lay the pipeline and build the pump-slash-compressor stations, it also has to cover all the work related to the installation of the field devices that will support remote operation. The pipeline is rooted along what is known as a right-of-way. Pipelines are generally developed and built using the following stages. Russia has pipeline troops as part of the rear services, who are trained to build and repair pipelines. Russia is the only country to have pipeline troops. Brine Field devices are instrumentation, data gathering units and communication systems. The field instrumentation includes flow, pressure, and temperature gauges slash transmitters, and other devices to measure the relevant data required. These instruments are installed along the pipeline on some specific locations, such as injection or delivery stations, pump stations, or compressor stations, and block valve stations. Milk Marine Pipelines 1965 A 32-inch gas transmission pipeline, north of Natchitoches, Louisiana, belonging to the Tennessee Gas Pipeline exploded and burned from stress corrosion cracking failure on March 4, killing 17 people. At least nine others were injured, and seven homes 450 feet from the rupture were destroyed. This accident, and others of the era, led then-President Lyndon B. Johnson to call for the formation of a National Pipeline Safety Agency in 1967. The same pipeline had also had an explosion on May 9, 
1955, just 930 feet from the 1965 failure, June 16, 1976 a gasoline pipeline was ruptured by a road construction crew in Los Angeles, California. Gasoline sprayed across the area, and soon ignited, killing nine, and injuring at least 14 others. Confusion over the depth of the pipeline in the construction area seemed to be a factor in the accident, June 4, 1989 The Ufa train disaster, sparks from two passing trains detonated gas leaking from a LPG pipeline near Ufa, Russia. At least 575 people were reported killed, October 17. 1998-1998 Jesse Pipeline Explosion A petroleum pipeline exploded at Jesse on the Niger Delta in Nigeria, killing about 1,200 villagers, some of whom were scavenging gasoline. June 10, 1999 A pipeline rupture in a Bellingham, Washington Park led to the release of 277,200 gallons of gasoline. The gasoline was ignited, causing an explosion that killed two children and one adult. Misappiration of the pipeline and a previously damaged section of the pipe that was not detected before were identified as causing the failure, August 19. 2000 A natural gas pipeline rupture and fire near Carlsbad, New Mexico, this explosion and fire killed 12 members of an extended family. The cause was due to severe internal corrosion of the pipeline, July 30, 2000, and for a major natural gas pipeline exploded in Gislengien, Belgium near Uth killing at least 24 people and leaving 132 wounded. Some critically, May 12, 2006 an oil pipeline ruptured outside Lagos, Nigeria. Up to 200 people may have been killed. See Nigeria Oil Blast, November 1, 2007 a propane pipeline exploded near Carmichael, Mississippi, about 30 miles south of Meridian, Mississippi. Two people were killed instantly and an additional four were injured. Several homes were destroyed and 60 families were displaced. The pipeline is owned by Enterprise Products Partners LP, and runs from Mont Bellevue, Texas, to Apex, North Carolina. Inability to find flaws in pre-1971 ERW seam welded pipe flaws was a contributing factor to the accident, September 9, 2010 2010 San Bruno Pipeline Explosion, a 30-inch diameter high-pressure natural gas pipeline owned by Pacific Gas and Electric exploded in the Crest Moor residential neighborhood two miles west of San Francisco International Airport, killing eight, injuring 58, and destroying 38 homes. Poor quality control of the pipe used and of the construction were cited as factors in the accident. June 27, 2014 An explosion occurred after a natural gas pipeline ruptured in Nagaram village, East Godavari district, Andhra Pradesh, India causing 16 deaths and destroying scores of homes. July 31, 2014 On the night of July 31, a series of explosions originating in underground gas pipelines occurred in the city of Kaohsiung. Leaking gas filled the sewers along several major thoroughfares and the resulting explosions turned several kilometers of road surface into deep trenches, sending vehicles and debris high into the air and igniting fires over a large area. At least 32 people were killed and 321 injured. Functions Development and Planning Operation The information measured by these field instruments is then gathered in local remote terminal units that transfer the field data to a central location in real time using communication systems, 
such as satellite channels, microwave links, or cellular phone connections. Technology Pipelines are controlled and operated remotely, from what is usually known as the main control room. In this center, all the data related to field measurement is consolidated in one central database. The data is received from multiple RTUs along the pipeline. It is common to find RTUs installed at every station along the pipeline. The SCADA system at the main control room receives all the field data and presents it to the pipeline operator through a set of screens or human-machine interface, showing the operational conditions of the pipeline. The operator can monitor the hydraulic conditions of the line, as well as send operational commands through the SCADA system to the field. Components to optimize and secure the operation of these assets, some pipeline companies are using what is called advanced pipeline applications, which are software tools installed on top of the SCADA system, that provide extended functionality to perform leak detection, leak location, batch tracking, pig tracking, composition tracking, predictive modeling, look-ahead modeling, and operator training. Pipeline networks are composed of several pieces of equipment that operate together to move products from location to location. The main elements of a pipeline system are Leak detection systems Since oil and gas pipelines are an important asset of the economic development of almost any country, it has been required either by government regulations or internal policies to ensure the safety of the assets, and the population and environment where these pipelines run. Pipeline companies face government regulation, environmental constraints, and social situations. Government regulations may define minimum staff to run the operation, operator training requirements, pipeline facilities, technology, and applications required to ensure operational safety. For example, in the state of Washington it is mandatory for pipeline operators to be able to detect and locate leaks of 8% of maximum flow within 15 minutes or less. Social factors also affect the operation of pipelines. Product theft is sometimes also a problem for pipeline companies. In this case, the detection levels should be under 2% of maximum flow, with a high expectation for location accuracy. Implementation Various technologies and strategies have been implemented for monitoring pipelines, from physically walking the lines to satellite surveillance. The most common technology to protect pipelines from occasional leaks is computational pipeline monitoring or CPM. CPM takes information from the field related to pressures, flows, and temperatures to estimate the hydraulic behavior of the product being transported. Once the estimation is completed, the results are compared to other field references to detect the presence of an anomaly or unexpected situation, which may be related to a leak. The American Petroleum Institute has published several articles related to the performance of CPM in liquids pipelines. The API publications are Maintenance Where a pipeline containing passes under a road or railway, it is usually enclosed in a protective casing. This casing is vented to the atmosphere to prevent the buildup of flammable gases or corrosive substances, and to allow the air inside the casing to be sampled to detect leaks. The casing vent, a pipe protruding from the ground, often doubles as a warning marker called a casing vent marker. Pipelines are generally laid underground because temperature is less variable. Because pipelines are usually metal, this helps to reduce the expansion and shrinkage that can occur with weather changes. However, 
in some cases it is necessary to cross a valley or a river on a pipeline bridge. Pipelines for centralized heating systems are often laid on the ground or overhead. Pipelines for petroleum running through permafrost areas as Trans-Alaska Pipeline are often run overhead in order to avoid melting the frozen ground by hot petroleum which would result in sinking the pipeline in the ground. Regulation Maintenance of pipelines includes checking cathodic protection levels for the proper range, surveillance for construction, erosion, or leaks by foot, land vehicle, boat, or air, and running cleaning pigs, when there is anything carried in the pipeline that is corrosive. U.S. pipeline maintenance rules are covered in Code of Federal Regulations sections. 49 CFR 192 for natural gas pipelines, and 49 CFR 195 for petroleum liquid pipelines. In the U.S., onshore and offshore pipelines used to transport oil and gas are regulated by the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. Certain offshore pipelines used to produce oil and gas are regulated by the Minerals Management Service. In Canada, pipelines are regulated by either the provincial regulators or, if they cross provincial boundaries or the Canada-US border, by the National Energy Board. Government regulations in Canada and the United States require that buried fuel pipelines must be protected from corrosion. Often, the most economical method of corrosion control is by use of pipeline coating in conjunction with cathodic protection and technology to monitor the pipeline. Above ground, cathodic protection is not an option. The coating is the only external protection. Pipelines and Geopolitics Pipelines for major energy resources are not merely an element of trade. They connect to issues of geopolitics and international security as well, and the construction, placement, and control of oil and gas pipelines often figure prominently in state interests and actions. A notable example of pipeline politics occurred at the beginning of the year 2009, wherein a dispute between Russia and Ukraine ostensibly over pricing led to a major political crisis. Russian state-owned gas company Gazprom cut off natural gas supplies to Ukraine after talks between it and the Ukrainian government fell through. In addition to cutting off supplies to Ukraine, Russian gas flowing through Ukraine which included nearly all supplies to southeastern Europe and some supplies to central and western Europe was cut off, creating a major crisis in several countries heavily dependent on Russian gas as fuel. Russia was accused of using the dispute as leverage in its attempt to keep other powers, and particularly the European Union, from interfering in its near abroad. Hazard Identification Oil and gas pipelines also figure prominently in the politics of Central Asia and the Caucasus. Because the solvent fraction of Dilbit typically comprises volatile aromatics like naphtha and benzene, reasonably rapid carrier vaporization can be expected to follow an above-ground spill ostensibly enabling timely intervention by leaving only a viscous residue that is slow to migrate. Effective protocols to minimize exposure to petrochemical vapors are well established and oil spilled from the pipeline would be unlikely to reach the aquifer unless incomplete remediation were followed by the introduction of another carrier. Exposure The introduction of benzene and other volatile organic compounds to the subterranean environment compounds the threat posed by a pipeline leak. Particularly if followed by rain. A pipeline breach would result in BTEX dissolution and equilibration of benzene in water, followed by percolation of the admixture into the aquifer. Benzene can cause many health problems and is carcinogenic with EPA maximum contaminant level set at 5 μG/L for potable water. 
Although it is not well studied, single benzene exposure events have been linked to acute carcinogenesis. Additionally, the exposure of livestock, mainly cattle, to benzene has been shown to cause many health issues, such as neurotoxicity, fetal damage, and fatal poisoning. The entire surface of an above-ground pipeline can be directly examined for material breach. Pooled petroleum is unambiguous, readily spotted, and indicates the location of required repairs. Because the effectiveness of remote inspection is limited by the cost of monitoring equipment, gaps between sensors, and data that requires interpretation, small leaks in buried pipe can sometimes go undetected. Pipeline developers do not always prioritize effective surveillance against leaks. Buried pipes draw fewer complaints. They are insulated from extremes in ambient temperature, they are shielded from ultraviolet rays, and they are less exposed to photodegradation. Buried pipes are isolated from airborne debris, electrical storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, hail, and acid rain. They are protected from nesting birds, rutting mammals, and wayward buckshot. Buried pipe is less vulnerable to accident damage and less accessible to vandals, saboteurs, and terrorists. Previous work has shown that a worst-case exposure scenario can be limited to a specific set of conditions. Based on the advanced detection methods and pipeline shut-off SOP developed by TransCanada, the risk of a substantive or large release over a short period of time contaminating groundwater with benzene is unlikely. Detection, shut-off, and remediation procedures would limit the dissolution and transport of benzene. Therefore, the exposure of benzene would be limited to leaks that are below the limit of detection and go unnoticed for extended periods of time. Leak detection is monitored through a SCADA system that assesses pressure and volume flow every 5 seconds. A pinhole leak that releases small quantities that cannot be detected by the SCADA system could accumulate into a substantive spill. Detection of pinhole leaks would come from a visual or olfactory inspection, aerial surveying, or mass balance inconsistencies. It is assumed that pinhole leaks are discovered within the 14-day inspection interval, however snow cover and location could delay detection. Benzene typically makes up 0.11.0% of oil and will have varying degrees of volatility and dissolution based on environmental factors. Even with pipeline leak volumes within SCADA detection limits, sometimes pipeline leaks are misinterpreted by pipeline operators to be pump malfunctions, or other problems. The Inbridge Line 6B crude oil pipeline failure in Marshall, Michigan on July 25, 2010 was thought by operators in Edmonton to be from column separation of the Dilbit in that pipeline. The leak in wetlands along the Kalamazoo River was only confirmed 17 hours after it happened by a local gas company employee in Michigan. Although the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration has standard baseline incident frequencies to estimate the number of spills, TransCanada altered these assumptions based on improved pipeline design, operation, and safety. Whether these adjustments are justified is debatable as these assumptions resulted in a nearly tenfold decrease in spill estimates. Given that the pipeline crosses 247 miles of the Ogallala Aquifer, or 14.5% of the entire pipeline length, and the 50-year life of the entire pipeline is expected to have between 1191 spills, approximately 1.613.2 spills can be expected to occur over the aquifer. An estimate of 13.2 spills over the aquifer each lasting 14 days, results in 184 days of potential exposure over the 50-year lifetime of the pipeline. 
In the reduced scope worst case exposure scenario, the volume of a pinhole leak at 1.5% of max flow rate for 14 days has been estimated at 189,000 barrels or 7.9 million gallons of oil. According to FMSA's incident database, only 0.5% of all spills in the last 10 years were greater than 10,000 barrels. Benzene is considered a light aromatic hydrocarbon with high solubility and high volatility. It is unclear how temperature and depth would impact the volatility of benzene, so assumptions have been made that benzene in oil would not volatilize before equilibrating with water. Using the octanol water partition coefficient and a 100-year precipitation event for the area, a worst-case estimate of 75 mg/l of benzene is anticipated to flow toward the aquifer. The actual movement of the plume through groundwater systems is not well described, although one estimate is that up to 4.9 billion gallons of water in the Ogallala aquifer could become contaminated with benzene at concentrations above the MCL. The final environmental impact statement from the State Department does not include a quantitative analysis because it assumed that most benzene will volatilize. One of the major concerns about Dilbit is the difficulty in cleaning it up. In Bridges Line 6B, a 30-inch crude oil pipeline, ruptured in Marshall, Michigan on July 25, 2010, mentioned above, spilled at least 843,000 gallons of Dilbit. After detection of the leak, booms and vacuum trucks were deployed. Heavy rains caused the river to overtop existing dams and carried Dilbit 30 miles downstream before the spill was contained. Remediation work collected over 1.1 million gallons of oil and almost 200,000 cubic yards of oil-contaminated sediment and debris from the Kalamazoo River system. However, oil was still being found in affected waters in October 2012. Pipelines conveying flammable or explosive material, such as natural gas or oil, pose special safety concerns. Pipelines can be the target of vandalism, sabotage, or even terrorist attacks. In war, pipelines are often the target of military attacks, as destruction of pipelines can seriously disrupt enemy logistics. Spill Frequency Volume Benzene Fate and Transport Previous Dilbit Spill Remediation Difficulties Dangers Accidents S-Targets <laughs>